All right, so we've been we're talking about combine and rookies. Um, so I figured that it'd be a, a decent discussion to bring in kind of last year's crop of rookies and weigh them a little bit against this year's crop of rookies. <clears throat> Obviously, you have Saquon, who is, doesn't even need to be involved in this conversation. So we'll start at Geis, carry on Chubb, Sony, Lindsay, and we'll be in that kind of area right now. And we just want to see where the top one or two guys uh, kind of factor into this situation here. Now, Rodney Anderson, we I mentioned on the uh, before the break that I think if he wouldn't have got hurt, I think he could have been in the discussion for the one one. He's currently kind of around my third running back. Um, but he probably won't quite make the cut in this conversation. I think we're mostly going to be talking about Josh Jacobs and depending on what round Montgomery goes in and where he lands, he, he could be in the discussion. I'm a big Montgomery believer. Um, so let's start with, with Geis. Would you take Josh Jacobs over Geis? Would you trade that situation for... Obviously, we don't know where any of these guys are landing right now. And we'll slowly work down this totem pole here. I think that's, I, I know the least of, 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 from the three of us about these guys, about the new rookies, but I I think that's right. an easy I mean, pass. You, so you yeah. got to start with I, a little softball here. Sure. Toss up. I mean, I think it's an easy pass to, to, I'm keeping Geis over anybody in this class. Right. So Geis is, we've talked about this before, mostly on the Patreon show, that we would all tr pretty much trade the 1-1 one, one for Geis. And to keep it moving here, carry on and Chubb, we pretty much would trade the one one for those guys as well. I would, right? Yes. Everyone's in agreement here. We're all kind of in that C C in that club. All right. Well, so the next kind of line of demarcation here would be, I would say, Sony Michelle or Lindsay. However, you feel about uh, those two players here, and this is where it starts to get interesting for me. Would you take Josh Jacobs over Sony Michelle? Would you trade that pick? and to get the rights to Josh Jacob right now. Obviously, we don't know where he's going to land and what's going to happen and what the pro day is even going to be like. But right now, let's just say he's the consensus kind of first running back off the board, even though I still like Montgomery more than he did. Call me stupid or whatever, but I'm still, I still like Montgomery more than Jacobs. Do you want Sony Michelle or do you want Josh Jacobs right now? That's a, that's a very strong question. Uh, I, I love Sony Michelle, love the player, love the prospect coming out so of college. Before both of you guys were in camp, Sony. So if this was last year, it would have been Chubb would have been the guy in Sony's position right now. That you know you understand what I'm saying there. Like, oh, well, back when it was Sony yeah, and Chubb. Yeah, you got it was. It you was guys were kind of on a little bit more on so, the Sony so side. close, but I was I was right. calling Sony. Yeah, over, yeah, 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 yeah. But so currently, we all agree that Sony's a notch below Chubb. Yeah, I, I think you. I think first of all, obviously, Kareem Hunt just went over there and create and kind of made that situation a little crazy, barring to figure mm -hmm. out how long the suspension will be, and and maybe even if he's still in the roster, how they decide to play that. Um, but you know, Baker and Chubb were a, a nice little duo over there. Baker was getting things done offensively, moving the ball around, and Chubb was making those explosive, explosive plays. And not that Sony couldn't have, but he really didn't break off too many big ones and when Chubb right. Chubb's got a 90 yarder and a 60 yarder and a couple of 40s those those are huge runs and huge like piling points on top of points right and the every time the Patriots decided and when Sony was healthy and the Patriots it was a Sony game he crushed 100 and 100 and a touch or more every single time right it he really didn't give you too many of those you know bad games unless it was in and out on that ankle injury or what have you. So uh, Sony's Sony did, Sony's not getting enough love. Oh, I think Sony's getting plenty of love. I think I don't think so. I think I think in the situation that it's the situation that is hurts Sony Michelle. The situation obviously yeah, Kareem Hunt's in Cleveland, but he's probably not going to be heard from for the better part of this season. Probably. Um and Sony Michelle's in New England and we just when Sony Michelle gets 8 for 80 and no touchdowns, and he doesn't really catch the ball in this current situation that he's in. He gets you eight points. Yeah, and not that I, it's not a knock on Sony Michelle. It's in the, the fact that he's in Patriot Land right now, and it's just they're so they're one of the only teams who does it how most teams should be doing it. Right, and be able to so, kind of whatever this team does well, we're going to kind of play off that, and we have the personnel to switch it up and do these things differently, which great for them. But sometimes for the fantasy asset, it's not that great. And and then on top of that, you have Tommy, who 
you don't know when. Obviously, he's not the dominant Tom Brady that maybe he once was, but he's still better than smarter. Again, he can switch it up regardless of what's going on. Exactly. So that's, I think, the, the, what, what the difference between Sony and Chubb is. Not to mention, I think Chubb is... is I, I liked Chubb better as a player in general. You did. You were uh, you were strong taking Chubb over Sony when in, when it came down to those battles, and you know we, I think both Big Co and I were taking Sony, and may, maybe we flipped here or there. But when then when he went to the Patriots, we thought that was pretty awesome compared to Chubb to the Browns. And sure, it took them trading Carlos Hyde, and and Nick Chubb just being freaking awesome. Well, just, what's that say just, about Nick Chubb? You traded Carlos Hyde to, to make sure you, this guy behind you was right. You couldn't. Right. Deny it. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to argue now. I'm. I'm. But they brought in Kareem Hunt. So. Definitely taking it's Chubb. Smart business move. Yeah. When you ask me, Chubb or Sony. Uh, so Jacobs or Sony. Uh, and I, I don't think there's a Jacobs or Chubb conversation here, right? No, we already answered. Not that. for me. We would trade the one one for Chubb. So there, there goes your Chubb versus. Agreed. Jacobs. Agreed. I mean, potentially situation wise, after the NFL draft, there might be something that jumps off the page. If the Browns say, "Hey, Kareem Hunt's, we're going to have a one two duo because that's we got a cap space and we're going to pay him a lot of money and use him and Chubb." Uh, potentially, there could but be. They don't have to pay him a lot of money because he's a third round draft pick. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know how that it, maybe throw that out the water because he got cut one time and yeah, now and you start over with a new new draft. Yeah, he's got new. Uh, contract. He just got whatever contract they signed him to, so right. it's not his rookie deal. Yeah. Uh, I I think that uh, I think I probably lean Jacobs here. I it's not, and it's nothing to do with if Sony as a player. I like Sony as a player, but it's just the Patriots, and it's it's the headache of having one of their running backs and the potential of him getting game scheme game planned out of a of a scheme, and it could be a James White game, and and he could get you. You know, he could really do well with, with the 100 yards on 20 carries and get you 10 points. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm ready. I think I want to take that gamble on Jacobs and even even before seeing where he lands. And obviously a landing spot could be like, oh, we definitely got to have Jacobs or maybe you don't want him at all. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's got name cachet. I think he's going to hold his value. I think people love him. I love him. And uh, I think I would I think I would loan – I would lean – Josh Jacobs, if he ha- if you if he ha- if I would trade you Sony Michelle to get, you know the one one or one two. I, I don't know. You're probably going to need a pick in the top three to get Jacobs, and three might not be enough to get Jacobs. I, yeah. Everybody wants to talk about wide receivers, but when when we're in rookie drafts, it's running backs. Like, I, right. It's and always spe- running backs, especially so. if if Jacobs goes to a decent situation and right. tests well at the pro day or whatever. So I'm down to take Jacobs. I think Sony would still be the guy that I would want in this situation. Number one, I've I've seen him play well. Again, it's not the it's not Sony not being a good player. It's the situation a little bit, but I would still feel more comfortable with Sony being on a good team and being mostly usable week in, week out. Some weeks it's not gonna be great, but for the most part I think he'll be, you know, pretty pretty usable uh for the foreseeable future. So I would stick with with Michelle in this situation. Uh, you also over, don't know what's going to happen with the Patriots. Jacobs. I mean, I know we've been talking about Patriots and Tommy and Bill going for years now, and I guess I wouldn't be surprised if they hung around for another five years and this conversation is irrelevant. But True. there is the there is that dynasty at some point ending. Well, Tommy's already said he wants to play a few more years, and he's not. He'll go until yeah. he can't so go. What would you I guess, do? I guess it doesn't matter. Go? I, I mean, I like what you said. I think it's... It is a tougher call when Rex Burkhead's healthy. There's no doubt about it. When Rex Burkhead's healthy, you, he's going to catch passes, and Sony Mich- or, uh James White's going to catch passes. Right, and, and and that's what hurts. That's what hurts the most with Sony Michelle. It is because they are they they're so good with their schemes and their play calls, and they'll you know you saw it in the Super Bowl all week long. We heard about the potential for James White to crush against that defensive line because they didn't really play run defense and this and that, and you know. The checkdowns to James White were, was going to be just off the charts, and then the Patriots' first drive, James White's nowhere to be seen, and it's Rex Burkhead. Mm-hmm. And and the two games before that, when they dominated the Chargers and the Chiefs, they pounded you with Sony Michelle. Like you know, it's it's the flip, it's the flip right. for the switch. They they got this switch that they can flip, and they're going this way or they're going that way. Just like Jay said, it is the headache of the Patriots, but you you still. You still got to think. I mean, they they got their they got their Super Bowl. So everything they did last year worked. I mean, as far as bad as it looked at some points, they spent the first round pick, late first round pick on a running back. 
They got their Super Bowl. Sony plowed through the first couple rounds of the playoffs. Did what he needed to do for them. It's like we said when he made that pick. It's like, all right, well, maybe Tommy's just getting – Tommy's older. Let's lean on the running game. Tommy can go into that third down mode anytime he needs. He can go into that quick pass and throw it to Julian Edelman, get us a couple first downs all the way down the road, all the way down the field anytime he needs to. But having Sony Michelle, and maybe it would have been a lot more consistent, Sony Michelle, if he hadn't have been hurt and missed that preseason stuff with the knee. And then he's well, that's, in yeah, and that, out for a couple of weeks. That was going to be my closing point on Sony Michelle is that you didn't even get to see a right. full see, gambit of Sony Michelle being all the way involved in everything that was going on with the Patriots. There was that. You know, exactly. And which I think that probably saps some of his explosiveness because in college he was a knifing explosive player. That which and is one of the reasons why I liked him so much. And you didn't see those big plays, which you hit on earlier. And he didn't get to practice with the team while he was out for those four right. crucial, crucial weeks of, right. of the Bill Belichick system. Hey, maybe is- just speculating, maybe that could, maybe you could then see a little bit more confidence in a passing game from him. It wasn't a thing that he really did in Georgia, at Georgia regardless neither one of those backs really did yeah they but didn't throw it to he the didn't backs. really have a chance to get acclimated in any sort of a passing down role with them mm-hmm. um, and as long as Dante Scarnecki is back and though they drafted a uh, Isaiah Wynn who Blows was his out. Uh, guy from which Georgia. I think they're going to end up moving him to tackle or at least that was the plan um we didn't see any of him Never and, played and if snap. Dante Scarnecki is there the the Offensive line is going to be good. That guy should be the highest paid right. offensive line coach, bar none in the league. From the time when he left the Patriots and then them boys made him come back, <laughs> the line was awful. And they're, now they're perennially always does, regardless of who's the guy there, they're always good. Mm-hmm. So if that guy's around, the run game's going to be good. Mm-hmm. And so I, I would stick with Sony in that situation. So what are you doing? You, t- you sticking with Sony there, Bico? Did you answer that question? I mean,. Pre NFL draft, give me Sony Michelle. Yeah, I, I mean this guy could you know be drafted by the Montreal Alouettes or something. You know, some we might not. I mean, be there's excited. really only a couple ridiculous landing spots that could really want me to sway this situation. And Carlos Hyde just got signed by the Chiefs. Not that that really does anything for Josh Jacobs or the Chiefs would have spent, which would, could be the only first round running back on Josh Jacobs here. Um, but I mean, maybe like the Saints could be losing Mark Ingram and maybe they get Josh Jacobs and then it's like, oh, well, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. I would trade this pick or maybe he goes to the Bears and now yeah. I'm excited. But, yeah. you know, there's only a couple of really huge destinations that I would be really, really excited with. But for the most part, I'm going to stick with Sony and a, and a good franchise. Um, not that I absolutely love Sony in the situation, but uh, in any, any given week, he's got three touchdowns, right? They're going to get to the goal line more often, as often as anybody in the league. Maybe, maybe nowadays you got you're looking at the Rams and those types of guys and the Chiefs that are getting there a little bit more often than the Tommy Brady led Patriots. But for the last 15 years, they've gotten the most inside to five rushing attempts for running backs. Yeah. So you can probably probably count on and some, some you know more Rex of those. gets back in there and some of those might maybe get vultured a little bit and you got Devlin who vultured plenty of Sony Michelle touchdowns at, at points during when he was there. Um, so at the end of the day, we got uh, basically two for Sony currently. Big Co seemed a little bit more on the fence than I, and Jay Wayne's going uh, Jacobs the, over I'll take Sony. Take the gamble. Taking the, taking the, you got the fever. Yeah. You got the fever. Well, Jay Wayne likes the new guys. Let's wrap this up. We'll uh, take another quick break. We'll be back with some more rookie talk for your pleasure. Urgh.